Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one for my stars. My stars. Get on stop. Get on stop. <laughs> I say this one for my stars, we don't need no handouts Y'all see me spitting bars, nigga, this the plan now Work is work, nigga, don't you ever change the route And free my nigga California from about that door pal. I say this one for my stars, we don't need no handouts Y'all see me spitting bars, nigga, this the plan now Work is work, nigga, don't you ever change that route And free my nigga California from about that door pal. Spitting different verses, I said ain't no time to let up Young nigga working, I say watch me fuck them texts I was very involved in the May Day demonstrations. And it was such a stressful time. And not because of the demonstrators, but because of the politics. It was such a crazy time. The first demand reads as follows. The Black Panther Party is and has been the victim of political repression and police bias. We, the students of Yale University, believe that these conditions subvert the legal system as an instrument of justice and preclude a fair trial for the New Haven Nine. We call upon the Yale Corporation and the American people to recognize this and join us in demanding that the state of Connecticut end this injustice. Suddenly, Yale was a place where there were teach-ins on the weekend about the atrocities in Vietnam. SDS was starting up. Black Panthers were having rallies downtown. There was a sense of seriousness of being in the world. I think our generation was really thoughtful about because so much was happening. Kingman Brewster was fabulous throughout this whole thing. He really brought Yale together in terms of his statements about Bobby Seale. He said that here's a man and I don't think he can get justice. And that really resonated with all the Yale students. 
Yale had collaborated with the Black Panthers to close down Yale to make Yale's facilities accessible in exchange for no violence. All the colleges, I think, served granola for breakfast and brown rice for lunch and dinner. We would set up in the courtyards. I did my dishing up of the food to whoever showed up. Those events really shaped my understanding of the world in a way that never got shaped in a classroom. <laughs> in fact, I think most of what I learned that first year had to do with what was going on outside the classroom. I think that for many in my generation who, were, who lived here then, our moral compass was formed by being students here experiencing that. So members of the Yale community do not feel they can turn their back on the rally and its participants, many of whom share these concerns. I would simply emphasize, as others have, that this is no picnic, this is no Woodstock. There was always a possibility of violence. Please come here. We are revolutionary youth. Yeah. Mr. Brewster up there has to be educated when he said the other day that this isn't Woodstock. We will not leperate, let them separate our culture from our politics. We are a people. We are all together. We are all under attack. America has decided to devour its youth. We will resist. We will not participate in America's Children for Breakfast program. Fuck them. <laughs> Because we learn from our trial, wasn't liberal senators, give a thousand bucks for anybody who can name a liberal senator, clean for Gene, George McGovern, Teddy with a bridge, all those fuckers, <laughs> a thousand bucks to anyone that protested the obscenity and the way Julius Hoffman spit in the face of the Constitution in our trial, not one of them did. We're free because 500,000 brothers and sisters went to the only courts we have left in this country, the courts in the streets, and said that they were on trial, they were defendants, they were part of the conspiracy. That's why we've come to New Haven to free Bobby. States, great universities are being systematically destroyed. Small nations all over the world find themselves under attack from within and from without. If when the chips are down, the world's most powerful nation, the United States of America, acts like a pitiful, helpless giant, the forces of totalitarianism and anarchy will threaten free nations and free institutions throughout the world. It is not our power, but our will and character that is being tested tonight. At a time when Nixon has been talking about some secret plan for ending the war, some plan that's so secret that nobody knows what it is, 
He announces now that thousands of American troops have invaded Cambodia. The Civil War in Vietnam ended in 1965, and it can't be put together again. And that's why Vietnamization will not work. Because Vietnamization failed, they've widened the war, they've extended to it to all of Indochina. And we've got to respond to that because there can be no separation between vamping on the internal colony and vamping on the external colony. This weekend we will have about 35,000 people in New Haven, and I've got a problem. I've got to find space for them to stay. I want all of you to help us in trying to find space for all the people in your colleges, in your rooms, and off campus. We will feed everyone who comes into town for May Day demonstration. There will be made, mainly be two meals. The first one will be served from about 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, and it'll be a familia. If you aren't familiar with the familia, you're in for a treat. Second, the second meal will be brown rice, rice and vegetable salad, whole wheat bread, coffee, punch, and tea. Now, as somebody dedicated to nonviolence, I want to say something about the hypocrisy of all of the talk about violence and nonviolence here. The real issue is that they've been holding Bobby Seale and these other people in jail under intolerable conditions as part of a coordinated plot, a plot coordinated in Washington, which has included the murder of Fred Hampton, little Bobby Hunton, and 26 others, has included the kind of raids on Panther headquarters with, that Big Man just talked about. And to try to transform the issue into whether the demonstrators would be peaceful or not peaceful is hypocritical and a complete lie. Right on. If any other attempts are made <coughs> to move against the Black Panther Party, then that will be an act against all of the people that's participating in this demonstration. Right on. Right on. So this, this means that we will have to move beyond the symbolistic attitude of marches and chants and shouts of all power to the people. It will mean making our power to the, to the people a reality by repelling the regressive or the aggression that's being meted out against those that are truly in the defense of freedom and justice in this country. All power to the people. All power to the people. We're going to execute a letter to the opponents of the chaise to assassinate Bobby Zee. The state of Connecticut is the one state that has kept the electric chair to assassinate Bobby Zee. Le procès qui va être fait sera un procès contre des hommes, sera un procès politique. The trial that is going to take place will be a trial, a political trial. Say deep, deep, say down, down, say deep down in our hearts. Say deep, deep, say down, down, say deep down in our hearts. We love the Black Panther Party. We love the Black Panther Party. Said deep, deep, I said down, down, I said deep down in our hearts. Said deep, deep, I said down, down, I said deep down in our hearts. Said deep, deep, I said down, down, I said deep down in our hearts. Said deep. Deep set down, down, set deep down in our hearts. We love the Black Panther Party. We love the Black Panther Party. Set deep, deep, I set down, down, I set deep down in our hearts. Set deep, deep, I set down, down, I set deep down in our hearts. Off the green! The Panthers have requested that people stay off the green. Please stay off the green.
the green. Listen, you guys, please go back to the campus. The last thing that we want right now is, is any kind of violence. We do nothing but help Bobby. We've been waiting too long. Listen, listen. Ain't no violence. <laughs> Everybody, please follow the truck to South Gate. <laughs> of Americans remaining in Vietnam, I would not hesitate to take strong and effective measures to deal with that situation. Despite that warning, North Vietnam has increased its military aggression in all these areas, and particularly in Cambodia. After full consultation with the National Security Council, Ambassador Bunker, General Abrams, and my other advisors, I have concluded that the actions of the enemy in the last 10 days clearly endanger the lives of Americans who are in Vietnam now and would constitute an unacceptable risk to those who will be there after withdrawal of another 150,000. To protect our men who are in Vietnam and to guarantee the continued success of our withdrawal and Vietnamization programs, I have concluded that the time has come for action. As Jose Mati, the Cuban revolutionary, said, the best way of telling is doing. This, this, this does not mean arbitrary confrontation, rampages through the streets and knocking down old women. We can't be anarchistic and emotional. We have to be clear-headed and organized. An example of this type of clear-headedness is the fact that Yale students cut their hair and took time to go into the white middle-class communities to rally support for this trial and for the cause of justice in the United States. Breaking windows and snatching pocketbooks will never lay a foundation for a long, hard struggle ahead. Politicizing and educating the very various segments of the young, the open-minded, and concerned will. It is not the party's place to tell supporters what to do or what to say, but our duty is to tell all of you about the necessary for about what is necessary for survival in America. I think we're going to find out that as America uh, intensifies its aggression abroad as it, as it has done in, in Cambodia and as, as it has done in the Middle East and as it will probably be doing both in Africa and Latin America, uh, you will see it's intensifying its intimidation 
uh, to stop uh, the second front that's opening up here in America. That you will see that every time people uh, begin to take to the streets to protest injustice, to protest racism and capitalism, uh, you will see now that uh, they don't even allow the local police departments to come out, that they immediately call in the National Guard, that they immediately call out the paratroopers and Marines to come out on call. And we see this as being ridiculous because there's people who have taken to the streets. Uh, obviously, uh, the majority of these people are white. So what you see here in America happening is that they're beginning to call out the National Guard on their very same people that they're supposed to be protecting. They're calling out the National Guard to protect the rights, uh, to protect the so-called rights that the people have in this country. You are oppressed. Whether you realize it or not, you're not struggling on behalf of black people. You're not struggling only on behalf of third world people. You are struggling on behalf of yourselves for your own liberation. <laughs>